Hi, Judy from Bungalow Quilting and Yarn here, and I recently posted a quilt on Instagram that had these lovely set-in circles. I'm Bungalow Quilting on Instagram, and the quilt has set-in circles as opposed to being applique on. Now, I find that people tend to be really afraid to uh, set in circles, and so they applique them. There's a couple of problems with that. Applique requires a very patient, steady hand, and it takes a lot longer than just setting in a circle. People are so afraid to set in curves into their seams that they'll resort to the applique. Applique doesn't stand the test of time the way that a set in seam will. I mean, it's beautiful, but in my lifetime, I don't have time to do applique. So I always choose to set my curves in using the sewing machine. So I want to help you with that so that you're not so intimidated. So there are multiple ways to cut a circle. You can use the old fashioned compass. You can use, you know, tracing a bottom of a coffee can or a plate. Any of that will work. I tend to use a cut around ruler because my measurements are on it and I, I, I have confidence with that. And we do sell those on our website, on our Etsy site. Just go to bungalowquilting.com and then click shop and you'll find in the search bar. Um, so what I do is I, I will cut a circle and I'm, I'm using my uh, cut around ruler and I'm going to put this tulip pink fabric, I'm gonna put this circle and I'm going to set it into this piece of fabric, all right? So if this were, if the if your pattern required a 12 and a half inch square, you're going to have this be a 12 and a half inch square, all right? So you're gonna cut your fat quarter or whatever you're using to a 12 and a half inch square for your, your block. All right, and then you're gonna decide what size circle you want. Now there's one rule of thumb that you have to remember. If you're putting a circle into another circle, obviously, the circle you're setting it into is going to have to be smaller. You're going to have to cut it smaller than the circle that you're putting into it. So the background circle must be smaller than the circle that you're putting into it. All right. And the rule is one inch smaller. All right. So if you are cutting this out as a 10 inch circle, you're going to cut a nine inch circle out of your background fabric. If this is going to be an eight inch circle, this background fabric, the hole in it, needs to be a seven inch circle. It needs to be one inch smaller. So whether you're using a compass or you know any method that's different than what I'm going to be using, keep that in mind. The rule is one inch. All right, so I have a cut around ruler here and this is the fold line on here and this is for the quarter inch seam allowance. The fold line is for if you're folding your fabric like I am, the outside line here is if you're only doing a quarter square and you're, you, you don't have a fold line, okay? so. Right now, I'm just gonna show you, the purpose of this video is to show you how to set a circle into a circle. So don't get all hung up on the rules of the cut around ruler for now. All right, so I'm going to put my fold line here on my fold line of my fabric. And I'm going to cut, oh, I folded it, I'm gonna cut an 11 inch circle, which means that the circle cut out of my background is going to have to be um, one inch smaller. So if I do an 11 inch circle here, I'm gonna cut a 10 inch circle out of here. Okay, so now we're ready to cut our circle. So I've put my fold line of my fabric, I've folded it like this. I folded it like here, and then I folded it back again. Okay, because I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut out a full circle. All right, so here's my fold lines here and here. And you gotta make sure that this is folded just right so that this part isn't cockamamie or that you're missing a piece. It's gotta all be nice and even. All right, so this is all nice and even, and I'm putting this on here and I'm going to cut a, let's see, I'm going to cut a, an 11 inch circle. Now that got pushed over, so you gotta make sure that it's all even, okay? And I'm gonna look to make sure that my 11 inch circle, which starts here, and 11 inch here, yep, that I'm, that I'm not extending off the edge of my fabric here. It's gotta fit the whole thing. It's gotta fit on there just right. And the other trick is you gotta have a 28 millimeter um, rotary cutter to use the cut around. If you're using some other method, you can cut with the scissors, um, but you have to have the smaller rotary cutter to use the cut around. Okay, so if I just apply pressure, this is supposed to, there we go. Apply some pressure, cut the 11 inch circle. Now I'm gonna go over it again and make sure that I really did get all the way through. Okay, now my 11 inch circle is cut out. Well, almost back and correct it with this. Sometimes at the very beginning there, it, it misses. 
And here. Yeah, all the way around. Okay, so now I've got my perfect 11 inch circle. So there it is. Now I could have probably tried to fussy cut this so that this frog was in the middle, but we're just gonna learn how to set in one circle into another. Now, if that was an 11 inch circle, remember what I said, that this has to be 10 inches. The circle that it goes into has to be 10 inches. All right, so the circle in the background is smaller. Think about a manhole cover. If you're covering a hole in the road, the manhole cover is going to have to be bigger than the hole that's underneath it so that it sets on top and you don't, it doesn't fall in. So it can't be the same size, it has to be one inch smaller. So I'm gonna try cutting it with this one this time. So there's a 10, so if this was an 11 inch, we're gonna cut this 10 inches. Oh yeah, this works just fine with this. Okay, 10 inches. All right, so now I have a 10 inch hole and an 11 inch circle. And we're gonna keep this folded just like this. I folded it in fourths and we're gonna keep it folded just like that. And we're going to actually make a teeny weeny little clip. Just a teeny little clip. But I'm gonna make sure that I go through both layers. But that's how tiny your clip has to be. Not any bigger than that. And this here, you've got a good fold. We're gonna just clip it just teeny tiny right there and just teeny tiny right there. Just teeny amounts, just very tiny. Then we're gonna go back, we're gonna fold this in half and in half again. And we're gonna do the same thing. Teeny little clips right here and right here on those folds. And then right here, just a, the tiniest, slightest little clip because you don't want to go into your seam allowance with that clip. So I'm gonna show it closer. That's, that's even probably bigger than I should have it. It should be a tiny little nick. You could also mark it with a marking pencil or marking pen, or you could also press it with the iron. But with a clip, I know for sure that I'm really accurate. Or you could put a pin in there. All right, so now I'm gonna go back to the sewing machine. Okay, so now we're gonna talk a little about the concave and the convex edge. Now here, I've trimmed this, I've cut this to 14 inches square. And then this circle here was cut 10 inches. This circle was cut 11 inches. So this one is always bigger than this one that you're setting it into by, an, by one inch. That's the one inch rule. So this is a concave edge. I'm sorry, this is a convex edge. This is a convex edge. This is a concave edge. Think about it as being a cave. It's open, like it's, it's you know, inward and this is outward. So the convex edge is always going to be on the top. I know the temptation for people is to do this and to try to sew this to this like this, and that's not a good idea because even though these are both bias edges, this one is gonna have a lot more stretch. Now I've hit this with a shot or two of Mary Ellen's Best Press all the way around, but just because you've got starch on there doesn't mean it's not going to stretch. So I, I hit it with Mary Ellen's Best Press, and um, I'm gonna be very, very careful not to stretch this edge. So this is going to be on the bottom, and this is going to be on the top when I sew. Now I want you to handle this and think about this like if you were making a pie crust and you were using lard, and it was this delicate, beautiful pie crust, and you had to pick it up off your countertop and place it into a pie pan, you would handle it so carefully and so delicately, you're going to do the exact same thing with this. You're gonna be very, very careful not to stretch it. And the whole point of this is to not have it stretch, to have it lay perfectly flat when you've got this sewn into here. So I'm gonna line up my little um, hash marks. Remember, I cut little hash marks in this, and be careful not to stretch it while I'm looking for those little hash marks that I clipped, because I'm gonna mat, there's a little hash mark here that I clipped, and I'm gonna match one of those up with uh, here it is. So I'm going to match this here and we're going to get started. Then this hash mark, hash mark is going to match, uh, this next one is going to match with this one on this side and so forth. We've got four of them. So I'm going to head over to the sewing machine. Okay, so now I've got the hash marks matched up and these are right sides together. And the bottom one is the concave piece, the piece that, that's the open one and the round circle is on the top. I've matched my two little points that have the hash marks and I'm gonna start sewing. And I'm gonna have my needle stop down engaged 
so that my needle does stop down. I like to sew with a toothpick because sometimes you can manipulate the fabric with that for two reasons. It keeps it from stretching. Um, you can kind of push it around that way. And the other reason is that uh, I'm not putting a piece of metal underneath my needle where it could, if the needle hits the metal, it's gonna hit, come up and hit you in the eye. Now, when I sew these together, the important point is that this is almost at a 45 or 90 degree, I don't know if that's a 45 degree angle. Yeah, I think that's a 45, no, it's a 90 degree angle. Not real great with the geometry here. So it's gotta be upright, like a fin of a shark. Let's look at it that way. It's gotta be up like the fin of the shark. And this is its back and this is the fin. So we're gonna keep that up when we're sewing. And you can stop and readjust your foot. Like you can do this and this to get it readjusted underneath. The main points being is that the next hash mark that I made on this circle needs to match up with the hash mark right here that I made on the background. So this is the background, this is the circle, and when I come around, these two hash marks need to match up. And you can't have pinches in the fabric underneath. And the way that you prevent those pinches is to hold this up like this and to keep these edges, this edge and this edge, matched up together. It's a quarter inch foot. You need to keep your quarter inch foot on your machine. Keep this upright and this is not getting pulled underneath here. We're not pulling it anyway. We're just guiding it a little bit with this toothpick. See how I've got these edges matched up so nicely there? And it's almost like it's it's like knitting or crocheting where you have to get the feel of it. It feels weird at first, but the more you do it over and over. So start out with scrap fabric. Don't start out with your best pieces of fabric. Start out with pieces of scrap fabric that don't matter that much if you're messing it up. Because you're not going to get this right the first time. It's going to take some practice. But once you t get some practice and you get it right, oh my goodness, it's so much fun. You're going to be piecing clamshells. You're going to be doing all this curved piecing, and it's really fun, and it, it's rewarding. Now look at how those... those. Okay, so... Um, we're coming up on those two hash marks, and they're working together. That's good. They're right there together. I'm going to keep this up on my sewing table so that I'm making sure that we're not stretching anything. And again, I'm keeping this up. I'm keeping this up at an angle. This is not flat. This piece is not flat. It's up on an angle so that when I come around these curves, we've got those edges together. You can use a toothpick. To, to hold those two pieces together. Hold, use the to toothpick to hold those two pieces together. Okay. And be careful that you're not sewing this other piece underneath. Now, remember what I was saying about using scrap fabric. Don't use your best fabrics right off the bat to experiment with this. The other thing you're going to find is that fabrics will react differently. Sometimes you're going to do this and it's gonna be so easy and it's gonna go so well and there's other times when a fabric that you use just isn't going to work as well and i can't honestly tell you why that is it's the same reason why when you put different threads into your sewing machine sometimes the tension is good sometimes the tension is not and it just i can't give you a good reason for that why some fabrics you're gonna it's like a good hair day versus a bad hair day it's a good fabric day or it's a bad fabric day and now there's my hash mark again right here and then here's my hash mark here and we are just a hair off so I'm going to use when, when that happens I'm going to use my toothpick to just gently not to make any puckers we're not making puckers but to guide that one underneath a little bit okay so we're going to see if that's going to come out right which it probably will in the end so we're just a hair off on that one so again, I'm gonna resituate myself, get this up on an angle. I'm holding it between my two fingers. See that, how it's up? It's not flat, it's up. And we're gonna come all the way around. And then there's certain parts of the circle too that are easier than others to sew, and I, I honestly don't know why that would be either. I don't know if you'd have to be a physics teacher to understand all this. But now we're coming up and it looks like these hash marks are gonna match up this time. They're lining up really well. We're gonna get all the way around to the end and hopefully everything will line up. And don't be too discouraged if you do have few puckers here and there, just keep trying, just keep working at it. Cause eventually when you get it all quilted together and you get it all sewn together, as long as they lay flat, see that's good. As long as they lay flat and you can sew them, you're, you're gonna be good. 
see how I've got that up at an angle? Don't have that flat, that is the key. Now we're coming around again. I'm probably gonna try to use my toothpick a little bit to guide this underneath here. Hold it flat, keep that up. The feed dogs help to feed that piece underneath because that under the concave piece is always gonna have more stretch and more pull in it. Always, always, always. Even though they're both bias edges, I, again, have no idea why. You're always gonna have more stretch in that piece. And if somebody's a physics teacher or knows more about this than I do, feel free to chime in. But you're always gonna have a little bit more stretch on that bottom piece, and that's why the feed dogs help to feed that through. Okay, so I'm gonna straighten that out underneath. Coming into the home stretch here, we're gonna hope that we don't have any puckers. I think we're good. I don't think we have any puckers or pinches. Again, I'm gonna push that a little bit with that toothpick. Let's see. And there you're done. And then we're gonna go over to the ironing board and press. Okay, so we're over here at the ironing board and I've got it where you can see the whole entire thing in its entirety and I don't have any pinches in it, thank goodness. Um, so I'm gonna, fl I'm gonna iron it, but when I iron it, what I'm gonna iron is I'm gonna do the seam allowance always toward the center. The seam allowance is always gonna to be toward the middle of your circle, this, towards your circle. And the reason for that is, oops, there, thank you, Laura. The reason for that is, is you don't want it to look like this. Uh, it would look like reverse applique. Maybe you do, maybe that's the look you want. I don't like it that way. So I'm going to put the seam allowance like this so that it looks like this circle was appliqued onto this piece of fabric. And it's all pieced in just beautifully. See that? It's all pieced in beautifully and you're gonna have this really nice flat circle. If you hold that fabric at an angle and you go slowly and you remember the concave and the convex edges and all that that involves. Thanks for watching.